We talked about it last quarter, this quarter, and next quarter. This is the single most important thing that we do as engineers, designers. You're going to have fuses, 600 amp rated fuses, and you're going to have 15,000 volt rated fuses. And of course, you're going to have circuit breakers. I have a bunch of circuit breakers here that we're going to be talking about, guys. I want to refer you to a few things for this presentation. Do you guys remember when uh, Mr. Christensen from Cutler Hammer came and he made a really good presentation about circuit breakers? I will refer you to some information you need to know about circuit breakers. But there's a few things I would like to go over. Um, overcurrent, there's so many ways of protecting an electrical circuit, Chris. We protect from overcurrent, from under over voltage, under over frequency, right? Directional current. The only thing that you guys at this point are going to be involved in is most likely protecting by overcurrent. So overcurrent protection device. We have um, fuses and circuit breakers. That's the notoriously famous Mr. Fuse and Mr. Circuit Breakers. We're going to talk about a little bit about the classes of the fuses, guys. There's a lot of information to be digested in this, so I'm going to make it easy, straightforward for you. Um, operation of fuses and circuit breakers, how do they operate? I can summarize it in one word. The higher the amp, the faster they trip. That's it. All of them. The higher the amp, the faster they trip. Inverse time characteristic curve. The higher the amp, the faster they trip. Um, understanding of sizes and ratings requirements. We'll talk about how do we size them for continuous load and so forth. Um, I squared, I'll talk about this one tomorrow most likely, but this is I squared T uh, lit through for, for uh, like current limiting applications. I'll talk, this is a big deal guys for fuses. Um, this is a current limiting fuse. The most important thing about current limiting fuses as we can see guys, Current limiting fuse, if I have uh, a 100,000 amp coming in, 100,000 amp, amp coming in, and my computer here is rated, say, well, my machine here is rated for 85, right? So what happens if you put a current limiting fuse on this machine, it'll take the 1,000, uh, the 100,000 amp and knock it down into 80 amps just by going through this material. They call them current limiting fuses. Because of them, we we can have a lot of major machines, guys. Otherwise, current limit fuses are major, major part of what we do. So they, what they do is they knock down, they call it I squared T, they let through. They don't let through energy. The only energy that they can let through is what the equipment can handle. Of course, you have to design that, right? Yes, Rob? Well, the way I understand it is the higher the current, the more the material, back to the, the 3M, material engineers, they make the material, the more the higher current, the more the material change its characteristics into resistance, impedance. So it starts choking. The, you, you, you pump cur more current into, the, into here, the material that they make it, it starts changing its chemical material characteristics into res more resistive. Chokes it. It doesn't allow it to go through. And it opens... Not hot, not hot enough to explode, hot enough to be handled. To hand, it, it's rated to handle the material, the, the, the operation, but it chokes the current. Think of it as choking the current, doesn't allow it to go through. That's what they call it, the I squared. Um, I is the current, the T is the time. The short circuit, guys, is not, it, it's not important how high the short circuit is. Well, it's important how high the current is. What's more important is how long you allow the short circuit to sit in your building. Take this 1000 short circuit that can sit for one second, that will make it 1000 times 1000 is what? 1000 times 1000, uh, three, what would they give me? 100, a million, yeah, three zeros, a million I squared T. For one second, make a million I squared T. That's the amount of energy that the equipment have to be able to handle for one second. Two seconds, it becomes two millions. Three seconds, three million. The more energy you allow, the more heat, and in this case, heat, your equipment is going to is going, need to be able to handle. We'll talk about the NEC requirement installation for our capacitor device, time current characteristic curve, and the lift rule. Every time you see the peak lift rule, I'm going to show you guys that related to, this is energy. This is energy. How much energy you want this, this equipment to handle? How much energy you want this equipment to handle? Now, you don't want it to handle more than what it's rated for. 
Okay. Um, requirement of a capital device, series reach, the values. Okay, two types. The most important thing that we we'll talk about, guys, is the two types, the fuses and the circuit breaker. Uh, will cause excessive excess temperature to the conductors. This is just sizing for the most part. Generally speaking, you need we everything needs to be protected from overcurrent, right? If I have a conductor like this, a conductor, here's my conductor right in here. I need to put an over temperature by 20 amp on this number 12 conductor so it doesn't allow this baby to heat up, up on a short circuit condition and create a fire. So this guy will handle it. So for the most part, equipment and conductors must be protected for their rated amps at their rated voltage. Rated amps at their rated voltage. To protect them, we use so-called overcomputation devices, circuit breakers, and fuses. Um, a couple of them, um, there's a lot of guys who are smarter than Chad. They get into this business of classifying them. Guys, you all is one of them. Dima is another one. Um, Establish standards for rating types, classification, testing. Uh, for fuses and circuit breakers, you can you can you can have more more information that you can handle about how to test, list, and classify fuses and circuit breakers. Um, fuses, your fuses, guys. Most of the time, I am looking at a fuse here. I'll pass these if anybody would like to look at them. The fuses are rated for 600 volt. Most of us are 600 volt, or um, your fuse is 250 or 600 volt. A lot of equipment guys are like, for example, this 250 can handle the following. We had 240 system, 208 system, 600 can handle 480 system, and 600 volt system, right? If your system is 600 or 400, what do you need? You need a fuse that's rated for 600 volt. And oh, by the way, a 600 volt rated fuse cannot fit on a, three, on a 250 volt rated fuse, they don't fit. The last thing you want to do is to put a, a volt, a one 250 rated in a 600. It's not rated, it, it will arc and spark because the insulation, everything is not rated for that stress of voltage. So it's a big deal guys in terms of voltages. Um, okay, so a couple of things about rating for uh, switches, for disconnect switches and, and this is for disconnect switch as well as, well as both uh, fuses. The reason why we talk about disconnect switches because most of the time, guys, when you have a fuse, you have to have some type, the code requires you to have some type of isolating the switch so you can take it out, some type of isolation. So most of the time you have a disconnect switch associated with each other. So you can disconnect, take the switch safely, work on it. Um, you guys are very familiar with this. I know because we talked about it many times. This is directly the thermal code. Unless, unless the disconnect that houses the fuse is rated otherwise. Unless it's rated otherwise. From the code, um, if it's if it's NAND conductor 14 to 1, it's rated for 60 degrees. If it's more than, uh, if it's number 1 out or more, then it's rated for 75. And 90 degree, we use them only for do we? You guys remember how we size the conductors? Um, if you have a disconnect, as you should most of the time in front of the fuse, that's what we talked about this, in front of the fuse. If you have a disconnect, we talked about this one in a second here, Chris. We said if you have a disconnect, they have a ground fault sensor. They have to have some type of a ground fault sensor. So suppose this is a 2000 amp, 2000 amp fuse, and this is a 2000 amp, um, disconnect, right? Lock into it, and the voltage is 600 volt, rated for 600 volt. Now I need I need to be able, guys, to trip up on the existence of um, a ground fault, up on the existence of a ground fault. So what they do is they have a little sensor that senses the ground fault and sit and trip a little sensor that senses there is a ground fault and have a little mechanism that trip the disconnect. If there is a ground fault, you trip. Who cares? The question is who cares? The code requires you guys, if you have a thousand amp or higher, a thousand amp or higher, you have to have a ground fault protection. Fuses don't give you a ground fault protection. You need a separate ground fault protection. So that's a drawback of fuses. So what they do is they have some type of a sensor in the interface, they call it ground fault sensing. It's a, it's a, a CT, 
that since there is a ground fault and it traps the disconnect, trips the disconnect. So if you're using fuses for your building, remember that one. Always ask for a sensor. If your system is higher than 1,000 amp, or 1,000 or higher, if it's less than 1,000, not required by code. Okay, so that's my um, fuses. Um, accessibility over overcome detection device. Um, occupants must have access to the overcome detection device. We talked about this one, guys, when we did the residential, the apartment, how we put the overcome detection device in the apartment. Um, okay, how high should the disconnect switches be mounted? When you mount the disconnect switches, guys, we apply the same rules, readily accessible. Readily accessible. 6, 7 is a, is a good rule to use. Not higher than 6, 7 unless you have other means um, from the bottom to this one, 6 feet, 7 inches. Um, so you can reach it unless you have other means of reaching it. I can put this disconnect up there with a hook where you can hook it up here and turn it on and off. Um, otherwise, readily accessible. As I said, same rules. This is same rules apply for the circuit breakers. You can't put the circuit breaker more than six, seven. This is meant for short people like Chad so they can reach without tripping. Voltage rating for circuit breakers equal, um, equal to the greater of the voltage of the circuit in which they are used. As I said, if the volt you can't put um, a higher or lower voltage circuit breaker in a higher or lower voltage location. Um, so if my system is, I have a circuit breaker, this is rated for 600 volt, I can use this circuit breaker on uh, the following. It's rated for 600 volt, I can use it on 480 system, I can use it in uh, 240 system, I can use it in 208 system. That's the voltage. The voltage, it can cover up to, up to 600 volt, up to 600 volt. If I have a circuit breaker rated for 250, then it's limited to 240 and 208, right? See how I can't go higher than that. That's for the most part what you could do. Continuous current rating and that device continuously carry. For continuous current rating, um, circuit breakers and for the most part fuses, guys. I hit the right fuses too. The unless, especially circuit breakers, Especially circuit breakers, unless it's rated 100%, you can only load them up to 80% of your rating. Unless, unless, right on them, it says 100% rated. For example, if you have a 100 amp circuit breaker, 100 amp circuit breaker, how much current can I get out of 100 amp continuously? 80 amps. Am I clear about this? You start having next quarter, Phil, when we get into a commercial building, 4,000 amp, industrial building, 4,000 amp, we're going to talk about something called 100% rated circuit breakers. If the circuit breakers say 4,000, we're going to pull 4,000 continuously forever because it's stamped with UL rating for 100% rated. Otherwise, all these circuit breakers that you're looking at are rated and fuses so are rated for 80% uh, of their continuous rating. Um, do you guys remember that rule? up to 800, I can have the circuit breaker higher than um, uh, the next higher standards. Over 800, you have to match them. I have a really nice slide for, for you um, on, the, on this particular. So up to 800 amp, the conduct, for example, a good example of this, later on we're going to use uh, a good example of this one, guys, is if you look at, uh, here's a circuit breaker, um, 400 amp, and here's a panel. And this is 400 amp panel, but the conductor is 500 kcm. And if you look at the how much current a 500 kcm can carry, it's actually 380, 380 amps. So here's a 100, a, four, a 40, a 400 amp protecting a, th a 380 amp cable. Is that okay? Only up to 800 amps. The rule of 800 amps. Up to 800 amps, that's okay. Higher than 800 amps. Higher than 800 amps, take this. I have 1,000 amp circuit breakers and I have a panel here. Then this cable must be, must be at least, at least the cable here between them, at least 1,000 amp. Make sense? And most likely the panel will be 1,000 amp. See, we start matching them. We said uh, uh, above 800 amp, we start matching them. 
Okay, interrupting rating. Almost all of them have something called interrupting rating circuit breaker, interrupting rating. So if the interrupting rating says there is 65 kilo amp, this means this baby here is 65 kilo amp. This means the highest amount of symmetrical RMS value that this, this circuit breaker can handle under standard voltage, under the voltage course, the voltage that's rated for. Uh, be, 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 without exploding. So up to keep feeding that baby up to up to 65k, you put 66k on it, it might turn into a big ball of fire. So as we said, interrupting rating of the short circuit of the over temperature device, we need it to be always equal or less. Um, we want it to be equal or more than available short circuit. So if the short circuit right here is 60 kilo amp, 60 kilo amp, this is 65, we're good to go, right? If, the, if this is 70, I have a problem. I have to go back to 85 kilo amp waiting for this to Does it make sense? The interrupting rating is always more or equal to the available short circuit at the equivalent. You guys are going to be doing calculation for Chad next quarter based on short circuit calculation. Short circuit current rating. Okay, this is what we just talked about, guys. The withstand current rating equal to or less than the short circuit current rating for the length of the time it takes the over temperature device to, to react. Uh, speed of response, how fast the circuit breaker or the fuse is going to trip is going to decide is uh, your protection. How fast? We want the circuit breaker guys to trip fast up in the existence of a high short circuit. They call it time current characteristic curve. We're gonna look at them in a second. Time current characteristic curves. Um, okay, fuses, dual element time delay fuses. Fuses guys, are, they, they call them uh, fast acting fuse or dual element time delay fuse or, uh, or and current limiting fuse. The dual element time delay fuse, it says dual because there are two elements in it, one for overload and one for short circuit. That's the whole thing. Time delay, it allows you a little bit of time to start the motors. A little bit of time to start the motors. So it provides time delay on a low overload range to eliminate unnecessary opening, unnecessary opening of the circuit because of harmless overload. This is a good application where you can put it on a, on a motor um, so you put a time, dual element time delay fuse on the, mot on the motor, and then um, so it allows you kind of to to start your motor without in rush on the motor without what without tripping. Oh, motor overload protection. So you can use it with motor overload protection, uh, slightly larger. If you guys remember the cord size, this type of, of it for motor is 1.75 percent. You take 100. Oops. Um, you take 175%, 175% times the full load current. Uh, overload backup, what's nice about this, Nick? It gives you overload overload backup for your system. Um, overload fails, then the dual element will take care of it. The dual element will take care of it. Any question about, about, guys about dual element time delay fuse? Where's the good application for it? Motors, why? It gives you two protection, short circuit and overload. But I have overload chad for motors. It's a, a, a redundancy of the overload. The, the more the merrier. Okay. Um, um, check time curve. This is just a few things about when we deal with motor guys. Every time you deal with fuse or circuit breakers on motors, you have to take into consideration the high starting the high starting of a motor and the nuisance tripping. The last thing you want to do is to have motors. If you have a circuit breaker, every time you start this motor, it trips. You look like you don't know nothing about electrical design, right? Um, so you have to size it. Be very careful when you size them. The next quarter, hold me accountable, guys. We will be using, I'll show you the, the starting curve of a motor and um, a starting curve. They call it starting curve of a motor. Looks something similar. Here's my starting curve of a motor. And here's my over temperature device sitting right here. Can you see that? Perfect. Beautiful. So this is, this is where 
so suppose that this one here is 100 amp. This one here uh, is uh, 250 amp. So can you see that these, the red curve, the red curve here does not touch the green curve? This is called, this is by the way, amp I here, and this is T time. This is called time current characteristic curve, inverse time current characteristic curve. The higher the amp, the faster it trips. The higher the amp, the faster it trips. Can you just see that? If you go here, it trips at this value. If you go down here, it will trip at a lower value. The higher the amp, the faster it trips. So this is the curve. They call this is the curve of the fuse curve or circuit breaker curve, guys. That's exactly what you're looking at, the fuse or the circuit breaker curve right in here. You will be doing it with Chad and Power Tools for wind and scorer. All these coordination. So as long as you allow the motor to start, you're good. Here's what, what's, let me, let me show you how a bad design would look. This is a good design. Show me a bad design, Chad. A bad design will look like if you grab this baby here and you bring it right here. Right? This is a bad design. Can you guys see the overlap between the red, that distance here? Let's use a black for that distance. Can you see that overlap distance here? This distance is all held break loose. Right in here, every time you start the motor, the circuit breaker will trip. Do you want that to happen in your project? No. That's why we do the overcompetition coordination. We use the rules in the code. When it says 2.5 go up, you go up, unless you know otherwise. Because you don't want to be cold because every time they start the motor, it will trip. Okay. Um, types of fuses, ground fault protection. But this is guys, um, I know we use this one and we will continue to use it. This is the table that we use. And if it's a time, uh, dual and time delay fuse, we use 1.75. Who cares? I have 100 horsepower motor if I'm to size it. That would give me 100 times 1.75, 175 amp dual element time delay fuse. Who cares? Look at this. When I go back, this means the green and the red will never touch each other. I have fully coordinated. So that's that's basically what they're showing. If I'm to show the time characteristic curve for these, here's my motor that we just talked about, guys. And here is my uh, fuse. Can you see my fuse here? Here's my fuse. Are they touching each other? No, we're fully coordinated. So this baby here is 175 amp fuse. This baby here is 100 amp motor, 100 amp motor. I use 100 amp instead of horsepower because it's easier to work with amps than, than horsepower. But you know, you guys know how to convert through the tables. Okay, so there's five times, there's current, if you have current limiting, I'll talk about current limiting guys as we go through current limiting fuses. Uh, fast acting fuses, fast acting fuses, those guys don't have any delay whatsoever. Actually, this almost looks like a fast acting fuse, the one I, I draw. Fast acting fuses guys, non-time non delay fuse. If you guys remember, for a 100 amp uh, motor, we put three, 300 amp fuse. So it's going to look like a 100 amp motor. Here's my 100 amp motor. If I put a fast acting fuse, it's going to look very sharp. Oops. I don't want it to overlap. Um, so it's going to go all the way up to here and back. There's not a whole lot of, uh, of maneuvering happening in here, right? So that's a fast acting fuse. Here's my 300 amp fuse. Here's my 100 amp circuit breaker. Look where we use this one. This is a good application on feeders. So Ashley, if you're designing a, a 1000 amp switch gear, fast acting fuse is a good idea. On sub feeders, on, um, on brand circuits too, for circuit breakers, bus ducts, uh, switch gears. So basically feeders and brand circuits, good application if you're using fuses, fast acting fuse, why do they call them fast acting? Because they go so fast. Current limiting fuse, they limit the current. We'll talk about the limiting the current in a few seconds. Fast acting, they trip fast. Current limiting, they limit the amount of current that, that can lead to current so it doesn't burn the equipment. Does not burn the equipment. Okay, cartridge fuses. Here's, you're looking at cartridge fuses, guys. 
um, cartridge fuses right here. A couple of things according to the code for cartridge fuses that you're going to be dealing with. Um, the voltage rating, you're going to have, say, 250, 600 volt, 5K. Um, well, let's not talk about the higher voltages. Um, this is for the voltage. For the current, you're going to have these um, from 100 amp all the way to, I think, they go 5,000 amp almost. 5,000 amp interrupting rating, um, rating greater than, so you have to have, if it's greater than 10,000, you can have a 22K all the way to, I believe, 200,000 amp, 200,000 amp interrupting rating. Carrying, carrying limiting capability, yep, they can limit the current. And there's the manufacturer and the trade name, JLC, and all this good stuff. I'll pass these guys to look at these different type of fuses that we use. Um, here's a fuse. This baby here is a class RK5. RK5. It's um, RK5 is a, is a time delay fuse. Time delay fuse. It says right here on it, it's 500 amp. Rated for 600 volt or less, 600 volt or less, um, and also right here, guys, it, it's the interrupting rating of this baby goes 200,000 amp. That's a lot of amps to interrupt. And current limiting capability, it has a current limiting capability too. It can limit the current. So that's a typical 500 amp, 600 volt fuse, current limiting fuse, current limiting fuse. It doesn't tell you. There's a chart that you have to use to, based on the type. This is type uh, RK, did I see? RK5. It'll tell you the class is RK5. It'll tell you what's limited to. Okay, plug-in fuses, guys. Plug-in fuses are like uh, uh, incandescent lamps where you plug it in. Rated, a lot of them are smaller, rated for 120. Uh, 15, 20, and 30 amps, so we're not going to talk too much about these. Um, uh, okay. What type of fuse is this? Yeah, these little, yeah, these 30, they're limited to 30 amps, 120, 15, and 20, and 240, as a matter of fact, you can put them 240. OSHA must not be worked. It, this is a few things, guys, for an electrician. You, you don't want to work on, on things energized. Power must be turned off. Um, voltmeter, first test. The, the rule when you work on equipment like this, I know you're not an electrician, guys. The rule is first you disconnect the equipment, then you verify and lock it, tag it. Then, we're not enough yet. Then you have to go check and verify that the equipment is de-energized. So you have to go measure. Does that make sense? First you lock, you disconnect it. First you turn it off with the appropriate way. If it's a machine, turn it off. Then you go disconnect it, lock it, tag it. Then we're gonna go measure is the voltage dead? Why? Because there's a lot of equipment malfunction, guys. The last thing you want to do, oh, whoop, lock tag and go grab that that phase and you're you're grabbing 480. So a lot of a lot of rules for using a voltmeter. You have to test that the voltage is is, is dead. Line to load, blah, blah blah. Power is turned off. Remove fuses from a switch. So you have to turn off the power before you move fuses from a switch. Okay, this is not a big deal. Cable limiters. Cable limiters, guys, I'll show you where to use cable limiters. If you have multiple runs and network type, they put a cable limiter. A cable limiter have a short circuit capability only. So if it sees a short circuit, it will trip. It wouldn't trip on a ground or on, a, on an overload. So it looks at short circuit. So if you have multiple phases, it will isolate that phase. I'll show you a nice picture. Here you go. So take this. I have four runs and an 800 amp panel. What is that? Uh, I have four runs. I have three runs of 400, uh, 500, 500, 500. And I can um, protect these with a cable limiter. Cable limiter. So take this. If, this. if there's a short circuit right in here, in this one cable, these are in parallel. These cables are in parallel. If I have a short circuit right in this cable, do you really want to take the two cables? You might, but why should I? I can isolate this cable. So this would happen. You have a short circuit right here. This will open. This will open. And you isolated the system. Who cares? Say the system is running here at 800 amps, like we're saying 800 amps fuses. Let's just say this is 800 amps pulling out of it. I still can pull the 800 amps out of these two sets. 
and I can get away with the other set. They do it this way, guys, to minimize the interruption of the loads. Minimize the interruption of the loads. Most of the time, you're not going to see it in design. This is utility pipe work. Utilities use them all the time. They isolate the cable. They have multiple runs. So if one fails, it isolates that one for continuity, and it keeps the system up and running. And then you can go there and test this. There's monitoring system that tells you. This is a great reliability system in downtown Minneapolis, guys, where they have a grid. Everything is grid together with multiple feeders. So if, if a substation is too short in a grid design, if you have a grid type design that looks something like this, and you take load from here, and load from here, and load from here. So what they do, if this is too short right here, you know what they do? They have a current limiting here and here and they will isolate that section of the grid. And then the loads continue to work. The building in downtown Minneapolis continue to work. Because you have multiple ways of coming and feeding the building, right? That's what the grid is. You have multiple ways of feeding the building. Notoriously famous in downtown areas, downtown major cities. They feed from multiple grids. So this, this section shorted. How about this section shorted? Same thing, current limiting, isolate this section. Now the current to this substation is going to be coming say from here, 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 bam. You wouldn't even know that there's a short circuit. So you go fix it, put it in, and move on. So current limiting. Um, if you have a, a if you have a corner grounded delta, most likely because you, you're not going to be doing a corner grounded delta like this. But if you are to use a corner grounded delta um, right in here, if you have a corner grounded delta, can you guys see this little thing here? This is, um, what they do is a fuse. It's not a fuse, it's a, a grounded service. Um, it, it's just a, a piece of copper that they stick in here. So if you are using a grounded delta, that phase B cannot be a fuse because you can't fuse a grounded conductor by code. Because you lose a neutral, well, you lose a ground conductor, you cannot fuse a grounded conductor. So how are they gonna land it in here without fusing it? So what they do guys is they bring it in here uh, and they put a connector. They put a connector. Can you see how they did it? I don't know if you can see. They came over here, landed here, came back here, and they went down into the system. But they can't use a fuse, so they use a cover connector. Looks like a fuse. Fits exactly like a fuse would fit. But it's really nothing but other than copper. Copper fuse. No, nothing in it. Copper connector. They use it for uh, a delta. Uh, solid, they call it solid neutral, solid neutral, solid neutral. You guys probably will not mess with that one. Copper bar fits with, rated for the uh, the voltage in the amps that's supposed to be in. So not going to talk too much about that one. You guys will talk. Time current characteristic curves and lit through. We've been talking about the lit through guys, property, short circuit, lit through. I'll show you a couple of examples on that one. Um, I have a couple of curves about the current characteristic curves. Circuit breakers, by code, the circuit breakers, guys, are, here's how they, the code design. They are devices designed to open and close, not just open. Um, uh, um, a circuit by non-auto means and open the circuit uh, on an auto means for a predetermined overcurrent value. So you can open them and close them manually. And if you have a short circuit, they trip. That's how they define, unlike fuses. Fuses, you're, they're supposed to trip. You can't plug and unplug the fuse like this. You plug it, you leave it there. Okay, the types of the fuses that we have, voltage case circuit breakers, power circuit breakers, and insulated case circuit breakers. And voltage case circuit breakers, guys, I believe they go up to 1200 amps. Molded case circuit breaker, here's, here's what you're looking at, right here. That's called molded case circuit breaker. 1200 amps. Now, power and insulated circuit breakers, these guys, they can go from, oh boy, I want to see if it makes sense to 1,000 amps all the way to 5,000 amps. Now, these, you start talking about um, a 4 by 4, uh, a foot by a foot by a foot cubic as your circuit breaker. A foot by a foot by a foot as your circuit breaker. Any comments, guys? Any questions? 
So molded right now, what, all what we did for this project is molded TS circuit breakers. Later on, guys, we're going to be using a power circuit breaker. A power circuit breaker, big boy. Um, and if you guys remember when, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, this is what you're talking about, one foot, almost by one foot by, where am I here, here? Okay, one foot by one foot, here. A foot by a foot by a foot, you draw out circuit breaker or bolted on circuit breaker. These are called more, uh, power circuit breakers. Why? You can unplug them, put them on the bench, work on them, fix them, and then draw them into the uh, switch gear and up the running. Very reliable. When does it make sense to have the power? At, at a thousand amp or higher. Don't even think about it if you don't have a thousand amp or higher. Expensive. Okay, here's the molded case circuit breakers. You're looking at a single phase or three phase. Uh, Breaker, thermal, thermomagnetic. If, if you have their, so that's for how they design them, guys. How they trip, there are two types of trip for them. There's something called thermomagnetic. This is, has a thermomagnetic. Has a thermal component when it heats up, it trips, right? And also there's a magnetic component when it, she, when it sees a very high amount of current for a short circuit, it trips. Very simple. The other, the other one is electronic circuit breaker. Electronic circuit breakers, they act like a magnetic starter. They have a sensor. It senses the current. If the current is higher than a certain value, it decides that this is our overload trip. If the current is also higher than another value, it decided that this is a ground fault trip. If the circuit is even higher again than a certain value, it decided that this is a short circuit and it will trip. All me electro me elect electronically, they have sensors, voltage and current, they sense and they make a decision. Very intelligent devices. If you have bimetallic component, you guys have looked at these, uh, thermodyna um, thermomagnetic, you have to be aware if you put them in a hot climate, what happens if you have a circuit breaker tripping and the circuit breaker is uh, in 110 degree Fahrenheit? Would, would you think that the, well, there's a thermal component here, if the ambient temperature is high, and it's also pulling current through it. So high ambient temperature, pulling high current through it, what is going to make it trip faster. So there's so-called compensation. They have to compensate for the um, for the tripping. You have to compensate, making that circuit breaker bigger, basically, so it doesn't nuisance trip. Ambient temperature temperature compensation. That's what we said. If you have to go into an area where the ambient temperature is extremely hot or extremely cold, you might have to. Um, compensate for that. It might not trip if it's extremely cold. So amp the key point is the ambient temperature will affect the affect the proper operation guys of of the circuit breaker. Common uh, misapplications. Uh, standard mode circuit breakers. So the the common misapplication for these guys is if the very common application, take this. I have a 10K amp and my panel here, it's feeding an equipment and the short circuit right here, if I do a short circuit is a 12 kilo amp. That's mismatch. What's gonna happen for this circuit breaker if it tries to interrupt, this is 10. If it tries to interrupt the 12, it's gonna explode. So you the short circuit, how would you know even the 12 here? How would I know the 12? I know this because I bought it. How would I know the 12? We have software that does short circuit calculation. Tomorrow we're going to learn how to do short circuit calculation by hand. Um, but thanks God we're software that we have a lot of software that does the short circuit calculation for you for every feeder. We're going to be using it next quarter. Um, and the other thing is if your short circuit have a very high rating, interrupting rating, then also doesn't protect you. <laughs> if it has extremely high, it wouldn't trip before the equipment burns. So you have to match it really, you know, if you have a, if you have a 12, you need 10. Uh, you don't need 65. So you have to kind of have the optimum design for this baby. Okay, series rated uh, systems. Series rated systems, I'll show you guys an example is uh i don't know if that's a picture is right here right here series rated system take this and we talked about this many many times so if the short circuit right in here is um say my short circuit this is series rated this is say uh, throw a value here the short circuit right in here 
um, as a 20, 20 kilo amp. The rating of this equipment is 10 kilo amp, this device right here. Um, the rating of the main is 22 kilo amp. Okay, so the, what the manufacturers do, guys, they, and you, we talked about this one before, they in the field, they coordinate between the 20 amp and 100 amp. So if a short circuit of 20 is to happen on the load side of the 20 amp, this guy will not trip will hold it, wait until the big boy takes care of it. It has to be factory listed in the, in, in the factory or engineered for these two to be series rated. Who cares? Do you want to go the opposite way, that the, the smaller one trips first rather than not the whole building it? You're up to the right. You're up to the right. Except here for the series rated, this value is whole hell break loose. And that baby cannot handle Look at that, 20K and it's rated 14K. If it tries to interrupt at 20K, it will explode. So under these circumstances, you really care less about losing the load. Losing the load is not your concern. You want the main to try. That's very good point, Chris. This will actually compromise the integrity of the electrical system if you have series rated. A short circuit here could trip the main, but, but, the reason why they allow me to do that because 95% of the time, the short circuit in these areas, 95% of the time is equal or less. Oops. Um, so 90% of the time, here's a 10K kilo amp, it's going to be um, equal or less short circuit value. So the short circuit, 90% of the time, is going to be equal or less than 10K. So there's only 5% of the time that you might, you're taking a chance of tripping. For you to save a certain amount of money, that might be attractive. Does that make sense, guys? So this, this system will give you protection 95% of the time. But it could be a certain time, 5%, could be a short circuit here, could trip them in. It's a, it's a risk that you have to take as an engineer, designer, and owner. And so series rated equipment, this is basically, and we talked about this one, guys, when, when Todd was here. So that's your series rated equipment. Uh, need for high interrupting rating, fully rated. Uh, fully, what's the fully rated equipment, guys? If you have a fully rated equipment, if this is 22, then this also has to be 22 kilo amp. Who cares? If you do a fully rated, it will probably add 50% value, dollar value, to the equipment that you're installing. There's a nice chart I'm gonna show you in a second here that talks about this. Indicate, okay, another less costly. This is basically to help you save money. Uh, series rated motors. If you have motors, you can't use series rated. That's why, guys, if you remember, we talked about series, series rated notoriously famous in two applications, lighting circuits, lighting panels, and receptacle panels. Most of the time, Lighting panels and receptacle panels, guys, a, a, a panel like this that feeds 90% of the loads is lights. I can have a series rated 10K and the feeder ahead of it could be 22K. If it's feeding machines, motors, anything motors, fully rated. Fully rated. If, you, if, if it's meeting, if most of the equipment is feeding machines, you are fully rated. This is how, this is really interesting, well, because I know these are topic, engineering topics probably, but uh, some of the connected motor full load current shall not exceed 1% of the interrupting rating of lower rating circuit breaker. If you have motors, this 1% becomes a big deal. So 1%. Um, so when you add all the full load current of all the motors, um, must not exceed 1% of the interrupting rating of the equipment. So take the 10, take a 10,000. What's 1% of a 10,000? What's percent, 1% of 10,000? 100, 100 amp? 100. Come on. What is that? 1, 1%, 1%. It's Monday, huh? Yeah, it's 100. It's 100. It's 100. So 10K times, 1% equal 100 amp, right? You guys say so, 100 amp. 
um, <laughs> take two from the K. All right. So then when you add the full load current to all the motors, you don't want it to exceed 100 amps. This is okay. If it exceeds, then fully rated. Then fully rated. Yeah. 10? You guys and um, 10, 1, 2, 3, divided by 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 100. Right? Did you get your mail today? Okay. Um, current limiting fuses our circuit breaker, guys, is to limit the lift through energy. The lift through energy. Uh, we'll show you a circuit have proper ratings, uh, component can withstand the lift-through current. So lift-through current, we'll talk, I'll show you in a second here. Cost consideration. Um, the whole idea of current limit fuses and uh, series rated equipment, guys, is to give you a, a reasonably priced project. These are all, you can have fully rated, but the problem is it's going to be very expensive, as you're going to see. So selection of type depends up when you select the type, it depends up on the interrupting rating, um, over competition coordination, the space, the cost of the equipment. Um, if the cost is not an issue, you can do anything you want. Okay. Uh, this is just reviewing guys the interrupting rating for different type of equipment, interrupting rating for different types of equipment or motors, and we went through that one. Under engineering supervision, you can increase that. HVAC equipment, when we have, remember the HVAC equipment, our machines, guys, we have overload protection. Here's the HVAC equipment, William. If it says they need a fuse, do you put a circuit breaker? No, you put a fuse. If it says, they usually tell you a fuse and the size of the fuse that you want. Maximum size, and they indicate if it's a fuse or a circuit breaker. So you have to give them a fuse or a circuit breaker for HVAC equipment. Okay, I want to show you guys a couple of pictures, and then I will, um, on this. So that's basically it in, in um, okay, we talked about the rounding up. This is uh, one of the missed, most important thing about rounding up picture that i ever seen. Look at this, 1,500, okay, this is okay. You get into this, this is a violation. Remember that 800 amp or the limit of 800 amp? Up to 800 amp, I can do this, 760, 800, 350, 400. But here, 1140, which is basically taking three, multiplying it by 380, right? This is here with violation. So what do you need to do? You need to add more conductors. This is the most important thing, again, a nice uh, way of showing that rule. Short circuit calculation, you guys will look at it. Fuses, what they do for fuses, guys, they can make them up to, look at that, the 600 volt fuse holder can fit, uh, they cannot fit um, um, uh, 250 volt fuse. So 250 volt fuse shall be constructed so that it cannot be inserted in a 600 volt. Um, here's a 30 amp, six, um, or 60 amp, so you, and, and, and 60 amp, Fuse, barrel fuse like this one cannot fit in a 30 amp. You don't want to put a, third, a 60 here, right? In a, a fuse holder that rated for 50. Physically, you can't fit it. So this is for manufacturers for the most part. Okay, fuses, guys. The current limiting fuses you have. Um, if you guys have this little net, you're looking at this current limiting fuses. RK5. This one is actually an RK5, isn't it? I thought it's an RK5. <coughs> RK5. Oops. Can you guys look at the RK5? This is current limiting fuse right here. So you see this little niche here? They they cut through it so when you put it in, it doesn't fit in a non-current limiting. If if you have a fuse that's current limiting, you don't want to put a non-current limiting because you screw up the system. So how do you prevent people from this is a 500 amp current limiting? What if 600 volt? What if I have a 500 amp? 600 volt non-current limiting it wouldn't have this little net so we didn't fit so that's what they are trying to say here so rejection fuses so it will look like this one this is a non-current limiting so see how the end here versus the end here the last thing you want to do is all these are current limiting fuses that i have here 
you don't want a uh, current memory fuses to fit in a non-current memory application. Okay, so that's a few of these. Any question guys about this? This is just for manufacturers. We talked about the um, um, cable limiters and how we apply it. This is a great application of cable limiters, uh, IDS tower, a couple of other buildings, government building downtown Minneapolis, they put these limiters to limit, isolate the short circuit to that area. Mostly utility work, we talked about this one. Here's what the neutral bus, if you, if you have, if you, if you, don't, you can't put a neutral, if you want to put the neutral on a fuse, you can't. So you put, they give you a, a tiny little piece of cover that looks like uh, a fuse, but it's really cover called neutral bus. Okay, here's what I want to, want you guys to look at here, if you don't mind me. This is called the current time current characteristic curve. And if you look at this, each one of these fuses has its own current, and it starts right here. And at this point, can you see where it hits this point? This is where it's going to trip. This is where it's going to trip. And this is how long will it take it to trip. Each one of them. So if I'm looking at this guy, this is, it's going to handle at this point, it's going to trip at this time. This guy at this point. It's going to trip at this time. Can you see it's an inverse in it? The higher the amps, the faster it's going to trip. The higher the amps, the faster it's going to trip. Please understand this because when we do the coordination next quarter, it will be very easy for you guys to see the coordination. Let me ask you, can you see that all these are coordinated? Are they touching each other? If, if the word coordinated, are they touching each other, these curves? No, if they're not touching each other, they're fully coordinated. So that's what they, what they call it, the current characteristic curve of equipment. Please look at the fuses, guys, different type of fuses, sizes, and so forth that we use. So this one at 100 amp, this is a 30. Can you guys see if this is a 30 amp, right? That particular one is a 30 amp. If you read at the top, a 30 amp, if I have 100 amp out of it, can you guys see if you have 100 amp out of it, it will take it to trip, how will it trip? It will trip in seconds at 20, 25, almost 28 seconds. It will take it almost 28 seconds to trip. Does that make sense, guys? Take this. I have a fuse, and my fuse is a 20 amp. Here's a 20 amp, and it's tied to a machine. Now, this machine is overloaded. Start to overload, and it's pulling 100 amp. Well, uh, shorted probably. It's pulling 100 amp now. 100 amp. Look what the fuse is going to do. The fuse is going to wait 100 amp, heat, 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 up to 28 seconds is going to open. What are we reading the fuse size on this? So right here. Right to the top. So every fuse has its own current characteristic curve. Any question guys about this? Any question? This is extremely important when you read the the curves. Here's a couple of other fuses. This is uh, current in oh, amps. Oh, it was the one that the example was 30. But there was, I think this is, oh, this was a 20, no? The example that we used was a 30, actually. A 30 amp right here. This is a 20. 15, 20, 30. If you look at the top. I don't know. 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.3. Are we looking at the same thing? Okay, let me see. There you go. See him at the top? Oh, okay. So it's a different uh, 15, okay. 20, 30, 60. Can you guys see all these second triggers by manufacturers or fuses come with a current characteristic curve? Can you see on the side it says the second that's going to trip, the seconds? And right here, the amps, how high the amp is. Any question, guys, about this current characteristic curve? We have a software called Power Tools for Window. It will pick all this information directly for every single fuse that God created for you. More of these are mass symmetrical. Um, I'm going to go right here. If I can have the current memory fuse, and I know, Chris, you asked me about this. Take this. If I have a fuse, 100 amp fuse, actually, it's 100 amp fuse, 100 amp fuse, right? Protecting 100 amp panel, 100 amp panel, okay? 100 amp fuse protecting 100 amp panel. The available short circuit right here is 40, uh, 40,000 amps. It's 100 amp fuse. 
It's a current limiting fuse. Can you guys see that? Current limiting fuse, 100 amp, available 40. If I have a current, but the equipment is rated for 10K. The equipment is rated for 10K. So what's going to happen if I have a 40K? Can you guys see I have a 40K and the equipment is rated for 10? What's going to happen to this equipment? Burn to ground. So if I have a current limit fuse, look what the current limit fuse does. It takes this 40 up to where the, where the curve is, is located. Can you see that? And it turns it back to this B that comes from the manufacturer and drop it down into how much? 4.6 kilo amp. By design, from the manufacturer, this 100 amp current limit fuse will drop a 40 kilo amp down to what? 4.6. Now, would, would my equipment burn? No. This is the essence of current limit fuse or lead proof. The most important thing about the lead proof. They call this value gas, RMS value, root mean square value, and it also limits the peak. I don't know if you can, the peak, it, we're not talking about the peak, but also the peak, if you look at the peak here, it keeps going all the way to the peak and it limits the peak um, from, uh, where's where the peak? Limit my peak into, uh, yeah, the peak supposed to be 92, all the way it limits it to 30. By the way, the peak is this value, the top of, this is the peak, and the RMS values are RMS value, this is peak, right? These are very important things, guys, when it comes to major equipment. So you want to limit both the RMS and the peak. The RMS, we know that it's that value, the average value for the signal. The peak is the top of the signal. So it knocks down the peak from 92 down to 10. Great, my equipment, who cares? My equipment will never burn. Is that good? Remember, current limit fuse is major, major part when it comes to 1,000 amp or higher or equipment that's actually, yeah, when it comes to sizing equipment that mismatch the equipment and the available short circuit mismatch. Any question guys about this? This chart comes with the fuses for every manufacturer. So where did they get this chart, Chad? Every manufacturer of a fuse will get you a chart like this with the current limiting fuses. This baby is a current limiting fuses. I can get a chart for this. That can get me for different sizes. This, for example, here is 60 amp, 100 amp, 200 amp, 400 amp, 600 amp. This cover up to 600 amp fuses <coughs> of this type. Any question guys about this? The current limiting, how it knocks it down? It knocks it down. Okay, so that's basically my current limiting fuses. Um, we talked about series rated, guys. Very important. 200 RMS, current limiting fuse. Knock it down to 10. Uh, current limiting again. Here's another set of series for current limiting fuses. This one is... Uh, this one for current limiting effect of dual element time delay fuse. This has a dual element time delay fuse. The first one um, uh, lit through current. Uh, uh, okay, for peak. All right. So same the same principle, guys. If you have a short circuit here, let's just say we're using. I want to use 600 amp. Okay, a 600 amp, and I have an 80. Look at this, an 80,000 amp. Take 80 all the way up, 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 up until you hit the uh, 600 then you go down 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 until you hit this and you go down 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 that will knock it down to 10 20 that 20 15 right almost 50 right in the middle it knocks it down to 15k and the peak if you want to continue with the peak it knocks the peak from 200 down to to 40 right big big deal I know it's not a big deal for you guys, but big deal when you get into the design, really is, for the design uh, of equipment. So current limiting fuses. Um, it has two values, one for the 250, uh, KR, LBS, KR, and the 600. That's why they have the two values from the manufacturers. We talked uh, about this one from uh, short circuit. Ground fault protection. What this is a ground fault protection, guys, on the system. What they do if you have a ground fault in a panel that a thousand amp. Look at that, a thousand amp or higher. A ground fault here. Take this. A ground fault here in this panel could be six hundred amp. 
Now tell me, how would a 1,000 amp, a 1,000 amp trip on a 600 amp ground fork? Can you guys see that? If I have a 1,000 amp main, and I have a ground fork, a ground fork just one phase, barely touching the, barely touching the, the box, and arcing there, and sitting there, and making, sucking current, not a whole lot of current. How would, and that current is up to 600 amp, how would that wake up? Would never wake up. That's why the smarter than Chad decide they need more protection. So they put a sensor right here. Can you guys see the sensor at the neutral? And they sense the current that's going through the neutral and and they they shunt trip the circuit breaker. If the current remember the current guys, if you have a three-phase system, the current's supposed to be balanced. What comes in must comes out on the neutral. If the current is mismatched and the neutral is not carrying what's coming, the difference between what's coming in. Then it will it will realize, hey, something is going somewhere else. Where is it going? Going through the ground, and it, and it, 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 there's a differential that differentiates guys, fix the value and analyze it in the electronic circuit and trip the circuit breaker. Who cares? It will protect your system from a low current ground fault. Required on every circuit, every system that's a thousand amp or higher, 48277. 480. 277 feeders branch circuit services if it's 28120 up to you okay so that's a big deal for a ground fault you're going to hear ground fault protection for equipment not gfci ground fault protection a couple of scares for circuit breakers this is molded case circuit breaker this is another care card for molded case circuit breaker um this, we'll talk about this one also tomorrow. Circuit breakers have uh, have two values for them. They look like this. And one of them is the max and one of the mini. Because circuit breakers got the mechanical equipment, it takes them a time to sense and open versus the fuse, it burns. Sense and open. So the, with the curve, the, we can predict that's going to sense and open between the minimum and the maximum. So if we, for the... For them, they give you guys the minimum. This is between this value, we know it's going to start the opening process. At the max, it will completely open. So, and again, this will be for next quarter when we get into that. Okay, series branch circuits. We think kilo amp panel is not series rated. 100 amp main breaker with 50 kilo amp rating. Okay. Okay, uh, let's go about series rated, guys. If you have series rated equipment like this, fully rated, series rated, you have series rated equipment, you're supposed to put right at the panel a warning sign like this, Ashley, that says engineering series combination uh, system, rated amps, identify replacement components. Uh, this is field, if it's in the field, field uh, labeling, series rated or uh, field labeling for existing panels. You have to put the replacement. So if you have a panel that's series rated, you want to tell the owner, you're going to tell uh, Ashley and, and Chad, anybody who's going to change these circuit breakers, tell them, by the way, don't change this circuit breaker except with this one, because you want to maintain the series rating between this baby and the one downstream. Very, very important. A label on the series rated, all series rated. What's wrong, guys? Because if you take a QO circuit breaker and put it in a QP, for example, and they're not series rated by manufacturers, it wouldn't work. If they're fully rated, who cares? If they're series rated, if it says QP with QP, it has to be QP, circuit breaker. Okay, the last thing, guys, is about um, air conditioning. If you look at the air conditioning here, air conditioning nameplate marked maximum size fuse, 40 amps. If it says fuse, then you're going to end up having, you have to put a fuse here. So that makes sense? And still, you have to put a circuit breaker here. But if it says a fuse, you have to put a fuse. But in the panel, you can put anything you want to put in the panel. But with the disconnect, you have to put a fuse if it says a fuse. Okay, so that's an example. We did that one last quarter, too, guys. Um, look at this. The nameplate, air conditioning nameplate, maximum size fuse, 40 amps. Um, uh, Non-fuse disconnect, that will be a violation. Air conditioning nameplate, mark maximum size fuse 40. This will be a violation. You have to put a fuse inside the panel or outside. Um, so what you need to do in this case is, if they said um, maximum fuse or a hacker, can you see the hacker circuit breaker? 
then it's okay to do that. Here's my hacker in. This is non-fused, okay? Because it says a hacker, a circuit breaker or a fuse. Long story short, it says a fuse, you have to put a fuse. Either you put the fuse in the disconnect or in the panel. Most likely the panel, you can't put it because it's circuit breaker. So where are you going to put it? In the fuse. You're going to... It said all circuit breakers currently made are HAC. Yes. Are yes. Or... It defeats the purpose. It really, it just, it, it has to say circuit breaker though. Right. For the, if it so says circuit breaker... It says or then you can just use a standard breaker. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so that's a couple of fuses, guys. Picture of fuses. I'm going to go all the way, different type of fuses. And you guys read this in a slide. And you're on. There's so many fuses um, that you can use. The most important thing, current limiting time delay fuses, circuit breakers, um, service factor, that's for a fuse. This is the panel that we use for many times, guys, to size fuses, circuit breakers. The most important thing in my mind is non time delay fuse, dual energy time delay fuse, and inverse size circuit breaker. And you guys know how to size them for motors from all these three. Because we did it multiple times, and we'll continue to do it next quarter. You're going to be visiting this one too. This table, guys, talks about different type of fuses. Uh, fuses are uh, a different animal, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. So let's look at this one. The first fuse is called KRP-C. It's an industry class C. It's rated up to 3,000 amp. Uh, look at where they use it. Can you guys see where it's used? High capacity main circuit breakers, motors, large motors, and so forth. So this table, if you want to know, understand about fuses, guys, this is a really nice table to get you where can you use which fuse, where. Uh, let me say KR. Uh, let's say KR. Here you go. Low peak dual element time delay fuse. Uh, 600 amp up to 3 KR1, KR5, KR5, right, right here. This is a KR5. One second. Uh, right here. Uh, I'm sorry, RK. Oh, chair. RK5. Where is my RK5? Here you go. RK5. If you look at this, this is, guys, this is this fuse right here. RK5. RK5 600. Here's the 600. RK5 up to 2000. You can use it on main heater, branch circuits, uh, motors, welders, you name it. Any question, guys? So here's you're looking at this basically. Um, RK5, not KR5, RK5. Any question about these? So these are different application for different type of motors. Fast acting fuse uh, versus dual element time delay fuse. More fuses. Uh, and you guys, I'm going to let you chew on these on your own. Look at the different types and different applications. If you want to understand one fuse that's used, commonly used, guys, really is, the one that I'm picking right here in my hand is RK5. RK5, a lot of application RK5. This is a time, um, this is current limiting and also time delay fuse. Time delay fuse, so it has some delay on it. Um, this is dual element, RK1. R this is, I'm holding RK1, guys. This is a dual element fuse. Look at the color is different now. It's current limiting and dual element. It protects from overload, overload protection. Okay, so you guys will chew on these at, at your own convenience. Um, breakers and fuses, type showing size and fuses of protected circuit breakers, um, APE size, poles, and so forth. Okay, here's my favorite. My favorite is comparing guys um, I know if you guys were here when uh, my friend Mr. Christensen was here. Look at the same circuit breaker, the standard thermal magnetic plug. Look at the price. You can go, this is the interrupting rating. Look and see how the, the higher the interrupting rating, the higher the value. Look at this. If you want to buy 100,000 interrupting rating for the same amount, you went from 189, well, down to almost eight grams. Well, not really, but can you see the higher the interrupting rating for the same device, the more expensive. <clears throat> Fail, that's exactly why we have series, series rated. Because if I have, take this, if I have a hundred amp here and feeding multiple circuit breakers here, uh, let's say 20 amp, and this one, uh, let's just say 
I'm going to say this one as 42K, and each one of these is, I'm going to make them 10K. 10K. Can you guys see that? And the available short circuit in this area here is uh, as 40, 40K. Now, this, these are series rated. These two are series rated. Can you guys see the price, the difference in price? The 10K, I'm paying this amount uh, versus the 42 i am paired this amount. Now imagine if each one of these is also 42. <laughs> Can you see why they use series rated? Expensive. To have the 20, all these 20s here, 42, you're going to be paying 651 versus you can pay 189. Again, these are for comparison only. Um, so long story short, that hopefully will justify why you need series rated. If you want to remember series rated from Chad, remember receptacles on lighting panels, really. That's a good application. Other than that, don't even mess with it. It's not worth it. So that's a nice value just to give you, and I know my friend um, Todd went through this one guys with you. Okay, that's all what I have. Hopefully that guys will prep you for tomorrow. We're going to do short circuit using all this and do a couple of short circuits. Any questions? It's a lot for a Monday. Can you take a look at four seventeen uh, question fourteen? Okay, give me a second here and I'll be with you.